do before that, let us observe the presence of God by observing individual silent prayers. Amen and Amen. The chairperson is going to give the welcome address. That's not my responsibility. I have a task to introduce the members of the IT who are Assistant Chief of Defense Staff, Operations and Planning, and the Minister of Defense. We also have members. Colonel I. Bangua, Director of Defense, Public Relations and Information, Minister of Defense. And then we Richard have Kaka. Colonel Richard Oakley, attached to Rekko West. We also have Major J. Bassi, Staff Officer Go to Defense, Public Relations and Information, Minister of Defense. So we move it over to the, to the police now. And then, of course, we have the basic leader who is in charge of um, Fruit and East, um, Dr. John Martin Tennessee. And then the AIG in charge of Fruit and West, the whole of Fruit and West, AIG Sylvester M. Kooma. And as usual, the chairperson for today, and who has been the chairperson for all our press conferences, is the director of operations and the person of AIG, Mohammed Abu Bamajan. Esquire. Esquire. <laughs> I need to add the Esquire. And my very self, ACP Gamma Kamara, the head of media, public relations. Well, I'm not Esquire, please. I have somebody said this. You are on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Esquire. Thank you very much. I start by welcoming you to another round of press conference. Senior members from this, uh, from our lab. I must say they have been very supportive. Uh, the public order we used to know is now different from what obtains currently. In the past, it was much easier. But now, all over is different, and so we have to have our assistive forces. The house have to support us, and they have really, really been supporting us. Um, all of them you see around here, particularly my brother here, I work directly with, with his senior colleagues of the SNP, um, who have been sleeping in the offices. That shows the seriousness we commit to the safety and security of the people of this country. People often ask, why do you have to bring in the military? Oh, this. Is even the most powerful countries we know, um, the United States of America, they have military deployment in the Mexican border that actually should have been done by the police, but because of its sensitive nature and its challenging nature, it is a military that is taken care of. And recently, the, uh, in, in, in the largest democracy in the world, the Indians, they had some challenges uh, which led to a tribal fight. So the military actually were deployed there to point there. And so uh, the military have been very helpful to us. But not only the police that I must play are here. They have been providing assistance to communities. Like when we see the applause here and there, they go to assist. Hey, it's your dry skin. The COVID-19, they were with us and they play invaluable role, which actually led to the gradual disappearance and total disappearance of COVID-19. And so I must say that they are very helpful to us and the people of this, in particular, and the people of this country in general. So we thank them a lot. Uh, they have been with us. We are meeting today because 
people think they can impose their own will on other Sierra Leoneans. That is the starting point, the genesis of what we are now facing. And so we have resolved that we should make a press statement giving you full details of what um, started. We thought we could be able to resolve it, but people not prepared to have it resolved resulted in what we witnessed today. On Saturday the 17th, June 2023, the Inspector General of Police to WhatsApp received a letter from the All People's Congress Party, the ABC Party, notifying police about their intention to hold what they called a peaceful march to the offices of the Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone, ECSL. We are convinced that the APC's request was predicated on Section 71 of the Public Order Act No. 46 of 1965, which states that any person who intends to take part in organizing or holding any procession shall first notify the Commissioner of Police which in, it, in this case, the Inspector General of Police in writing of its intention to do so. Uh, people, more so the gullible public, have always been misled. That in fact, it's not the right of the police to ask that we notify them and they give approval before ever we should hold processions. Where they have been very economical with the truth. Because what is the reality is that while you process against, there are people who process in favor. And the only individual that will separate the two is naturally the police. In addition, there are hoodlums around who actually will want to hijack the procession and prey on the general public by actually looting their wires. And so somebody else should ensure an organization that that does not happen and naturally it is the police. The police should have to use the intelligence outfit to see whether all of what I have mentioned will not happen. And so they engage those planners, if they have marshals, they can actually work with the police to ensure that the hoodlums really will not hijack and uh, convert it to their own benefit. And so, or you go to the street, as I told you, you say, I I'm going to uh, process against. And then people materialize. They say, no, we are proce processing in favor. And there will be a firefight on the street. So if there is no police, that's cool, even no call. So that's what we always tell them. Tell us, if you want to process, we'll look at why you want to process. We we'll organize our police personnel to ensure that you are protected while you process. In fact, it is a right of the police to determine the route to use if they see that the initial route indicated will uh, lead to a chaos. So we say, yes, you say, is this route? But no, it's dangerous to use this route. Use this other route that the police should decide on that. And we've been seeing this even in the West. In the US, at times you see um, people protesting this way in favor against and the police separating the middle. And if in the, in, the, in the recent past in South Africa, when Nigerians were being traced, they attacked. And they resolved that, look, until we come together and face these South Africans, they are going to kill all of us. And so we saw Nigerians standing this way, South Africans this way, and police separating them. But when people really want to be very economical with the truth, to mislead the gullible public, they say, no, 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 there is no law to say that. And what is unfortunate, these are people who are actually very much aware of the law. And so 
That was why we believe that the APC as a party contacted through WhatsApp the Inspector General of Police. So the principal staff officer on behalf of the Inspector General of Police acknowledged receipt of the letter from the APC party and extended invitation. As I told you, we invite you, you explain, and we see how to go about it. Because what we always want to be the end result is to ensure that there is peaceful outcome of the procession. And so that was why invitation was extended to them for a meeting with them on Monday, the 18th June 2023 at 1300 hours to discuss issues around the planning for the cell procession that will include the number of people that will be involved, the time and route among others. Unfortunately, none of them showed up. It's a very serious thing when you apply, you want to process, you engage the police, all these issues will be discussed. And then, once you are given a clearance, you are now assured that we are aware of the number of people that will be involved in the procession. And you are assured that adequate police presence will be there to ensure that nobody attacks. And those are the people who have no business with your procession, we go about their normal business unaffected, but they did not show up. So on Tuesday, the 20th June 2023, the Inspector General received another letter from the All People's Congress Party captioned as further notification of intention to hold peaceful march to the offices of the Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone, slated for Wednesday, the 21st June 2023. So despite the fact that they didn't show up, they didn't honor the invitation of the Honorable Inspector General of Police, but then they wrote another letter. And so they again were invited for a meeting to uh, the a meeting on the 21st of uh, June 2023. The letter states as follows, we want to unequivocally state here that if all the issues are not resolved in today's 12 p.m. meeting, be notified that we have now called out our supporters nationwide to converge in all designated areas to be communicated by the party for a peaceful protest on Wednesday, 21st, June 2023. So even when they reneged on the first meeting, they are still saying that um, as read of them communicating if all the yeah, requests are not met. So on receipt of the letter, the principal staff officer again acknowledged receipt of same and extended invitation for a meeting with them on Wednesday, the 28th of June, Tuesday, the 28th of June, at 1,000 hours to discuss issues around the planning for the said procession that will include the number of people that will be involved, the time route, among others. Further to that, the principal staff officer reminded the party of section 17-2 of the Public Order Act of 1965, which gives the Inspector General of Police the power to disallow the holding of any such procession on imposed conditions as he shall think fit on any procession where, in his opinion, in the interest of defense, public order, public safety, or public morality so required. So as a surprise, they also did not turn up for the meeting again today. This day we are called to a meeting so that at 1,000 hours, let me hasten to inform you that even though this meeting was pending, the Secretary General went on the air to ask the people to process. 
in defiance of what we have as a law. So they did not show up today. So in all fairness, the meeting called with the APC party was meant to plan their proposed procession to ACSF. So we have never, as an organization, refused to meet with them. Instead, they that are making the request are the ones who are not showing up at all. So we want that to be noted seriously. I, was, I wish to state that it is mere propaganda from the former mayor. You, 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 you could have seen her on the air saying that the security forces shot dead two people. It is unfortunate and totally misleading that somebody who was actually holding such a responsible position as the mayor of the city of Freetown, the capital of this country, could go on the air to state things that never happened. And you know what? Yeah, we are observers around. And if you go through the WhatsApp, you will see where somebody said, oh, I've been here all this time. The security forces did not fire a single shot. So what they have been pouring on the ground with, and it's very easy to detect, is the blood ink. And I must say, this is not the first time the APC as a party has done this. If you remember, there was a demonstration around their offices where a woman was standing, a huge woman, uh, what she was claiming to be blood. It was not blood. And that was proved. And the same today has been proved that no shot was released. On the contrary, On the contrary, they had uh, ex combatants in their offices, and these were the individuals who released shots, five shots. Five shots. The L'Oreal plumping. Shots, two from a pistol, and three from AK-47 released from the direction of the um, headquarters of the All People's Congress. A single shot was not released by the security forces. And so what the former mayor is disseminating is a criminal lie. Such a lie is criminal. We want you all to understand. If people were shot and killed, the majority of staff will have actually notified the general public that we have received two individuals who were killed. That has not happened. I don't know whether she thought of that. Unfortunately, probably she did not. And so, even at the heat of things, there are rules of engagement which the military, the police, all the primary forces involved in the execution of their duties are forced to abide by, and they have always. In fact, when we have serious operations of this kind, we send out on the field members from the CDID Complaint Discipline and Internal Investigations Department because we expect security forces discharging their functions to still remain professional. And so where breaches are observed, we actually institute proper disciplinary investigations. But we want people for the, at least for the love of this country, not to be informing the world over of things that are not happening. And so no single individual was shot. And so um, 
we may think of doing something, but with time, we'll inform you accordingly. On the receipt of um, that letter, as I told you, the principal, the principal staff officer acknowledged receipt of same and extended invitation which they did not show up. And uh, as I told you, on the contrary, five shots were released from the headquarters of the APC party uh, headquarters two from PS2 and three from AK-47 rifle. And the police would like to inform the public that ex-combatants are believed to be harbored within the party headquarters. In fact, we were informed of, about this through information, and we've worked on that, but we'll take the appropriate steps to address that. The SLP wants the public to know that not a single shot was released by the security forces. A claimed endorsed by observer who said, look, I've been around here, no single shot was released by the security forces. That is very important. So we are therefore disappointed that the former mayor was spreading false and malicious information to members of the public. But we also want her to understand it's not only the members of the public here in Sierra Leone she's disseminating malicious, unfounded, and misleading information, but let her understand that with the technology we have, she's actually stating things that are misleading to the world over, because somebody sitting in the West can access that anywhere in the world. And um, this is not a love for one's country by smearing the security forces that are meant to ensure the safety and security of the people. This is not how we actually resolve cheap politics. Now, we want people to be very mindful that things they say about this country will be assessed by other countries in world over. So no report so far has been received from any hospital or mortuary about deaths occasioned by today's incident. We want to assure the general public of their safety and security at all times as we prof professionally discharge our functions. So please, be rest assured that the security forces have you people at heart, and we stick to our oath to save life and property at all times. I always tell you that what makes a lot of people go to bed and snore whole night is because they know that the security forces are out there, awake throughout the night. And <laughs> that's no exaggeration. All these days while you people have been asleep, we have been awake. One this morning, you see all us here, because we are told that they were, people are going to come out this night, we organized patrol, we patrol this whole western area. When we came back, they said, no, they are now going to come out by six, and so by four, we are again moving here and there. We came back. We could ha hardly have some rest. They said, oh, in fact, it's nine o'clock. They have said they will come out. And so we again decided to tour. I remember we are at Wikisen Road, really, close to uh, Main Motor Road, Congo Cross, the uh, uh, bridge there, when it was nine. And so that tells us. I tell you people how committed we are. We have not been sleeping. All these days we have actually been staying in our offices throughout the night. This is because there are people who are not interested in the development of the country, in the safety of and security of the people. And we must ensure that it should not really um, 
have their desired goals by disrupting the peace and security of the people. So we sacrifice our slaves to ensure that that doesn't happen. And we assure you people that we'll continue with that, with our military brothers and other security sector members. We'll continue with that. We are here with CDS, with the Inspector General, at times at night, we'll move up around. Those are the key members at the helm of security sector. Why they are at home, they communicate constantly, constantly as they hear of the intention of people disrupting the peace of this country. We will continue with this posture until we get to elections. Those who are not prepared to see the safety and security of the people of this country and the multi-tier elections to go on peacefully will be behind bars. Why that multi-tier election? No matter the status, if you are prepared to disrupt the peace of this multi-tier elections, believe me, you will be our guest. You will be our guest. I must re repeat that. Why the election will go on. So, as usual, please, through you, inform the general public that we guarantee their safety and security, but we equally admonish but we guarantee their safety and security, but we want to admonish other Sierra Leoneans who are deviants to think twice that this is the only country we call our own. The only country at night to wake up and walk in the street no matter the riches you have, the police will not be chasing you to see how you got it. <coughs> In other countries, they will monitor your movement and will not allow people to destroy this country. Let them think twice. We are prepared, we are resolved that those who want to obey law and order, have the full protection of the law. Understand that those who are ready to obey rule of law have the full protection of the law. But those deviants who think they can be obstruction to peace, they will face the full force of the law. Make no joke about that, no matter the status. And so once again, let me conclude by asking you, uh, my colleagues, through you to the general public, that let them have enough, no fear, we'll continue the security forces to do our routine patrols, to remove those who will jump on the streets to disrupt their normal businesses, just for them to go about their normal work. And those who are not prepared to obey law and order will face again the full force of the law. I thank you all. God bless us. Thank you, sir, for taking us through. And uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, we want to hear from you by way of questions. You might have questions for the regional commanders we might have questions for chairman. This is why we have a team. This is a team. Um, I want you to understand that uh, some arrests were made today 
I will not wait to actually state that in answers. For Freetown East, they arrested 57 individuals. They are in police custody pending investigations. For Freetown West, nine individuals were arrested, now in police custody, helping the police with investigations. So, so far, the general security situation here and the I must say, uh, here in Freetown and the Northeast, is now quiet. Uh, let me make that clear and not wait until you ask question. But what we have experienced here today did not happen in the South, did not happen in the East. It only happened here and Northeast, not even in Northwest, uh, well, actually part of Northwest in Gambia, which was quickly put. Uh, under control, so it's a situation that happened here, part of Northwest and Northeast, McKinney and Maguruka respectively. But apart from that, for the rest of um, the country, nothing happened. But as I speak to you, the security situation is calm and quiet, and people are now going about their normal business. Thank you. So, um, this is my talk. So, uh, let me start from here. Please, let me sound a note of We are not looking for elaborate questions. <laughs> eh? Start to give preambles. No, no, just ask a question, please. Thank you very much. Give that knife to this man. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon, all. <clears throat> My name is Ado Koka. I'm managing editor of the New York newspaper. Um, Mr. Operations um, Commander, you made mention of 66 people arrested just today, 57 and a 9 in the entirety. Yes. Now, um, did you use Judges Rule 1 um, as expected, or you just use normal method of arresting? All right. Secondly, sir. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, sir, um, the police for today, I mean, since the time of early June, that is the 12th, 13th of June, I've been seeing your uh, mood or your ways of doing your operations has been very, very accommodating with the um, I mean, in the city, the free town populace. Noting that you use mic to encourage those that are not volatile, those are not violent, those are not that are not brutal to go home or go about their normal businesses. You even use speakers to encourage people who want to do their business to continue doing their business. And today at the um, APC office, um, statements were made by, I mean, APC people that the police has done this, police have done this. Wherein journalists explained that, of course, they saw all police officers um, busy monitoring what's happening rather than using heavy force as was expected. Is it, is it a unique way of doing policing now? Or? Uh, Let me make certain things clear. We are managing this press conference. 
So please allow people who have to uh, come in where necessary, but please don't disturb them. We'll give you the time to ask your own questions, please. Thank you. Is it a unique way of policing or is it what you want to use as an entirety, I mean, to police um, the Sierra Leone? Thank you. Mohamed Bikamara is the name from AYV Television. Um, you mentioned um, five shots were fired at the APC um, headquarters. From, from APC headquarters. And uh, as the police authority, what, uh, um, what are some of the steps uh, will you be taking and to ensure such thing doesn't happen? Because considering the fact you say these people have, they are ex um, officers or military people, and if they had, if they had this, this um, 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 ammunition, then I think it's worrisome for the general public. What would be your step? Lastly, um, I, 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 I'm not specific to the place. I do have an intelligence that um, somewhere around across the country, um, some youth want to, uh, they nearly attacked a police station. Is that true? Doing this process, please. My name is Mohamed Lamin. Good afternoon. My name is Wimon Charako. I come from Liberia. A member of the Female Journalist Association of Liberia. We are here with support of Inter News and the USARD to monitor the elections. And uh, why in Sierra Leone? I'm a son with the Awoko newspaper. So, sir, so we have two more days to election and series of attempts or threats of protests. What's the assurance that the elections will be possible on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Ibrahim Bakoma, Executive Director of Citizens Rights Network, Civil Society, and Human Rights. Uh, to the Chairman, uh, you made mention about the ex combatants that are present in possessions of prime base arms from the APC office. For clarity, sake, please can we identify the bullets because it has an indication on each shell that is coming out. Secondly, why, why are this resolved to ex combatants especially for the, for the military? Discover right? Uh, why, 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 why? The ex combatants why they are allowing the ex combatants to move with rifles? Right, it's a question. Don't worry. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm Don Stansko, I'm from newspaper. Uh, my question is very simple. Uh, we all can recall that there was a, a communique signed by political parties to discourage ex-combatants from um, um, housing in um, political party headquarters. Um, is it that uh, why have you not been um, um, why have you not, as a police officer, why have you not uh, enforced that community until it is leading to this kind of situation? Because I am of the firm conviction that you have the power to enforce that community. Thank you. Yes, Taliba uh, is my name. Because I have three questions here. I wish you could help me with two questions because very important question. Yes, the first question is, of course, I was at the scene, and there were allegations at the ABC at the office there. Okay. Uh, coincidentally, I saw some soldiers from coming from the other side of the town. And I asked a few questions from those that I met around, and there were allegations that those soldiers were coming directly from the state house. And they said 
those shots were shot by them. That was an allegation. So I don't know if there is any other information to justify that that allegation was not true. And the next question here is, the police are entrusted the responsibility of ensuring that we have free, fair, and peaceful elections in Sierra Leone. And they are expected to be neutral in executing the law. And the APC is a main opposition party contesting in this June 2023 elections. Could the APC allege the, the SLP as, I mean, standing in their way in terms of protesting to have a free, fair elections? Or the police are doing their job to ensure that there is peace and tranquility during the election process? Thank you. Give me, give me. Thank you, media one. Thank you.